My lips shiny enough? Are my lips glossy enough for this video? I think not. Sunscreen is by far the most important product in your skincare routine, but for people with medium to dark skin tones, it can be the most difficult one to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are putting the Murad Environmental Shield Essential C Day Moisture Broad Spectrum SPF 30 PA++++ these names are getting so long, it's ridiculous, <laughs> to the test to see if it's dark skin approved. If you missed the last episode, I will link it in the cards up above. Make sure that you're subscribed and click the notification bell to be notified every single time you put another sunscreen in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As I'm rating this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind, and at the end, I'm going to give it an overall rating out of 10. Let's talk a little bit about the product. The product claims to be a daily moisturizer. It's supposed to hydrate, protect, and revitalize the skin. It helps shield the skin from environmental aggressors and sun damage. It brightens the skin with vitamin C. It's great for all skin types. On their website, it specifically says, reveal radiance and protect the skin from UV damage with this vitamin C rich SPF moisturizer. Potent antioxidant gingle biloba leaf extract helps shield the skin from environmental stressors such as pollution for glowing, healthy looking complexion. It even states that it gives the ultimate glowy finish to your regimen. We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> So I talked about the brand in the previous Murad sunscreen review. Um, so I won't go into too much detail here, but you can check that video if you wanna know more about the brand in detail. But a few things that I do wanna mention, it's a 30 year old brand, so it's you know pretty established. It's a high end drugstore brand as well. It's dermatologist and pharmacist founded. They focus on antioxidant rich preventative aging. So with all of their skincare in general, they are 100% cruelty free. They also pride themselves in being environmentally conscious by packaging their products with FSC certified materials, recycled materials, as well as compostable packing peanuts. So when you get it in the mail, the little packing peanuts, they break down in your compost. Um, they're also shifting all of their new and old packaging to post-consumer recycled materials or glass packaging, which I love. I also love that they have the answer for what do you do after your products are done. They've partnered with TerraCycle, which I am no stranger to. I've talked about them a few times on this page as well. TerraCycle is a program that helps you recycle your products into raw materials for free, which are then used to make flooring tiles, storage bins, outdoor furniture, and so many other products. I love seeing when brands are doing their part to take care of the waste that are created, especially since companies and these brands are they're producing the most of the waste. So it's nice that they have an option to not only just give you the product, but also take care of it after we're all done. For the brand, it will be getting a point from me. Let's talk about the packaging. So this packaging comes in a sleek matte tube. It also has a pretty fine nozzle. I'll zoom in so you can see, but there's actually a tiny nozzle on this side. I do love that specifically because I love using the two finger method and it's nice to easily pour it out on your fingers. I love that this has clear packaging because you can see exactly when it's done. And because it's in this tube, you can cut it and clear all of the product out. So you're not letting any drop go to waste. It also has a twist lock cap so you know exactly when it's closed. Packaging is pretty simple. That's really what I look for. I'm more interested in the ingredients that are in here than the packaging itself. And I really love that they stand for that too. So for packaging, it will be getting a point from me. All right, let's get to the good stuff, price and quantity. This product retails for a whopping $93 Canadian. It is often on sale and it is also currently on sale on the Murad website for $54, but I still think that's pretty pricey. It also comes with the standard 1.7 fluid ounces worth of product. So let's do some math to calculate the average daily cost. 1.7 ounces divided by 0.04 ounces equals 42.5 days. $93 divided by 42.5 days makes this cost you $2.19 every single time you use this product. And this is of course based on one application. I'm using this on my face and my neck. I've gotten some comments on my previous videos of people advise me that I should be using three fingers. The two finger, three finger, it's just a guide and dermatologists have said that it's okay to use two finger length worth of product when you scoop it up and I have done this in a previous video before scooping it up with a quarter teaspoon 
it does fill the whole quarter teaspoon. I've also measured the square footage of my face so I know exactly how much product I should be using. Two finger lengths for me is just fine. The reason why I've done 0.04 is because I often use a stick sunscreen to reapply sunscreen on my face so I don't necessarily use this product and I feel like it would give a more accurate representation if we do it as one. Little disclaimer, but um, this is the most expensive sunscreen that I have tried so far, I think. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's it's really pricey for the amount of product that you're getting, which is standard to every other product that you're getting on the market. So if we're specifically looking at price and quantity, I would say that this is a 0.6 because I've seen other brands obviously get it done much lower. The packaging being so simple makes us know that they're not spending money on the packaging. They're spending it on the product itself, which I love to see. With that in mind, we haven't looked at the ingredients yet. So let's go on to the ingredients. First of all, let's talk about the sunscreen ingredients. So this is SPF 30 plus which gives you about 97 percent protection against UVB so this is pigmentation this is tanning on your skin usually I do love to see 50 SPF but you will never get a hundred percent SPF protection 30 plus is just fine SPF 50 only gives you 98 percent protection so it's not really that big of a difference and even a hundred SPF only gives you 99 percent so also it has PA plus 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 that's three pluses UVA for aging and so this is also rated as very effective so no problems there with the ingredients one of the reasons why I love Murad is because it is dermatologist and a pharmacist founded it makes it so easy for me they do list the percentages of all of the uv protection that they use i will list them here on the screen as a good mix of uva and uvb protection this is what i love to see these are the standard ones and i do love to see them i'm good with that so those are the active ingredients let's talk about the rest of the ingredients in this product looking at the ingredient list it has a really good mix of hydrating moisturizing and also oil control ingredients which is actually quite interesting it include this includes fatty acids amino acids skin soothing ingredients to actually rebuild your skin barrier, um, anti-aging ingredients, as well as pigment reducing ingredients. So I love that mixture there. This is why I always say if there's one product that you can use in your skincare routine that will give you like the protection, the uh, brightening of your skin, fortifying your skin, the moisturizing, hydration, use a sunscreen. And products like this with the formulation that's in here, these are exactly the types of products I'm talking about. So this is where I was kind of going back and forth with the price, because if you're going to use one skincare product, I'm talking, you're not using a serum, you're not using all these other, you know, whatever, you don't really have anything that you're trying to fight or combat on your skin, and you're just using one sunscreen. In that case, I would say that this would be worth the price because of the ingredients in it. But if you're someone who's gonna have like serums and you're using other things in your, in your skincare um, regimen, then this may be just a little bit too overpriced for you because you're going to be spending money on the other things. So it depends on what you will specifically be using. Oil soluble vitamin C makes it a lot more stable. And that's why well, that's one of the reasons the delivery method is a lot easier as well. So it reduces irritation. It's an antioxidant. It helps to scavenge the free radical damage, um, which means it's great for anti-aging and helps preserve the skin's natural collagen. Um, it evens out your skin tone and it also aids in dark spot fading. Now, when I say dark spot fading, I mean from the sun. Sun damaged dark skin fading. The other star ingredient is ginkgo biloba, which is a plant extract. It's also a very, very high antioxidant. I've only seen this in a few other products, namely the Fenty skincare line. They also have ginkgo biloba, I, I believe. Few, few products that I've seen it in, but I really actually do like this antioxidant and I would like to see it in more, in more products. The combination of the ginkgo biloba, I'm gonna say that very slowly, ginkgo biloba and the vitamin C, it just helps to boost the effects of the antioxidants. So you're getting a supercharged antioxidant. There's some other star ingredients are urea. Very interesting to see this in a sunscreen. It's hydrating, it soothes, uh, smooths out the bumpiness on your skin. So if you've got texture, that's great. And it also helps to even out the skin tone. They also have taurine, which is a naturally occurring amino acid that's found in the skin that we actually lose as we age. So it's nice to have that replenished topically. This ingredient also helps to maintain skin home homeostasis so it helps the skin do what it needs to do and create that environment so your skin can heal itself effectively. 
and this is also great for restoring your moisture barrier. Lastly, they have ectoin, which is a new ingredient to me. Um, it's a hydrating ingredient. It prevents moisture loss in the skin. It reinforces the skin barrier as well. It is also anti-aging and gives a pretty promising amount of protection and buffering qualities according to the Paula Choice Ingredient Dictionary. And it also has anti-pollution effects. This one also evens out your skin tone. So there's a lot of things here to just brighten up your skin, which is, I really, really love this formulation. They also do list some of the ingredients that they made sure to not include. So parabens, sulfates, and phthalates, they also are gluten-free. I haven't seen gluten-free skincare products, especially sunscreen products, very recently. I personally don't have an allergy to it, but I know that there are a lot of people that are, so it's really nice that they have that in there. That'll be really great for people with those sensitivities. So for the ingredients, like I'm really, really loving this ingredient list. I did give it a 0.8, and we'll talk about why a little bit later, but for the ingredients that are listed it is a beautiful formulation like this is super this is what i like to see let's talk about the application so this product is a very lightweight thin consistency it kind of has like a watery consistency not quite watery it's like a lotion i'll say that it's like a lotion it's creamy it rubs into your skin very very quickly glides on the skin with ease and it also doesn't leave an oily residue on your hands that i find a lot of sunscreens do this one doesn't it's a very luxurious formula so that will be getting a point from me let's talk about the finish so this product gives a healthy shine to the skin when it goes on immediately, you're gonna think that it's a dewy finish, but actually it dries down pretty nicely to a skin-like finish. I put it on the back of my hand, and as you can see, like it has completely soaked in. It just looks like skin. I love that. This will be really good for people that don't really like a lot of shine. Um, but yeah, it soaks in very, very nicely. I love how this finishes on the skin. So that will be getting a point for me as well. Let's talk about reapplication. On second application, this product applies without any pilling, which is music to my ears. We love that. It rubs into your skin very easily and doesn't disturb any of the dry product that's on your face. I forgot to mention that I did find this product pilled a little bit on my neck. It did not get any pilling on my face, but when I put it on my neck, um, it gave me a little bit of balling up. Now, that could have just been the fact that I put on a body lotion that did not mix well with it, but um, yeah, I forgot to note that. And even on my hands, you could see the product coming off, which was really weird. I only noticed that the one time, so that's why I think it was a body thing. It was something that I had put on my body that did not interact with it well. But other than that, it was fine. Makeup goes on really easily with this. I found that my foundation just blended out so well. Now, once again, I don't wear a lot of foundation, but when I do, um, it applies very nicely over it. And it feels like your skin is shining from within. I really like that. Even though this product is not matte and doesn't give you a matte finish, because it's, it's more of a skin-like finish, I don't feel the need to worry about shine throughout the day. With that being said, I have combination skin. We just came out of winter and I live in Canada, Alberta. So uh, it's pretty dry out here. My skin right now is behaving more on the dry side and that is because I have eczema prone skin. It's a whole story, but I didn't have to worry about any shine on my face or the breaking down of this product as I wore it. I really like the way that it held up. Over makeup, ugh, I feel like the texture works against it when you're putting it over makeup. It took everything off of my face. <laughs> um, so it, it's definitely not, I don't know, it just kind of broke down the makeup that was on my face completely. So it's not my choice for over makeup application. I think that this product remained really shiny primarily because you're not rubbing it in, you're just tapping it in on your face. And so it just took a, a lot longer to absorb when you're not rubbing it in, which was kind of disappointing. But like I said, I usually use stiff foundations to reapply my sunscreen anyways so I don't really mind that too much so overall I'm gonna be giving reapplication a 0.7 white cast <laughs> as you can probably tell there is no white cast with this formulation and this is why I love chemical sunscreens so that is gonna be getting a point from me now we're down to fragrance 
Okay, so this product does contain fragrance as a listed ingredient. Specifically, it has fragrance limonene linal oil. It also has pigment, yellow 6 and red 33, which according to the Paula Choice Ingredient Dictionary is ruled safe to be used in this way. So no issues with the pigment, but the fragrance specifically, in my experience, it has a very floral citrus scent very strong on the citrus side but it almost has like a herbally type of low note to it which i think is kind of cool i do like the scent i do i do think it's a really nice uh, very pretty scent it's something that i would wear as a perfume actually the scent however did sting my eyes my eyes won't stop watering i've been wiping my eyes <laughs> I just finished my makeup. My eyes won't stop watering. Oh, I'm trying to fan them. And it's making me sneeze. Like, I had to bring out the VIX because my allergies are acting up because of this. And look at my eye. There's like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like redness in my eye right now. In this one. On this side. That's really unfortunate. Ugh. I am seriously going through it. I wouldn't consider this an allergic reaction. I just think there's something in here that is triggering my allergies. But I think that that may be a me problem. I've tried this for a few different days and it has stung my eyes every single time I've put this on. So the sting of the eyes is a problem. I think the allergies is just a me thing. <laughs> I was just keeping it like around and not actually up to my eyes like I do with some of my other sunscreens. It did not matter what I did. It just was not for me. Now, if you are someone who can tolerate the fragrance, I would recommend using like a setting powder around your eyes to just make sure that the product dries and it's not like um, migrating. Because as you're, if you're putting anything around your eyes, the warmth of your skin is going to make the product migrate towards your eyes. And I think that's why it was stinging my eyes so badly. But I had to wash this off my face. I could could not even like wear it. I could not wear it. <laughs> so I ended up having to wash this off my face. However, it did not give me any stinging on the skin. Like I said, I patch tested this product before. There was no irritation, no redness, um, which was kind of interesting. I have sinus issues, so it could be a me problem. So take that with a grain of salt. Just because the fragrance did not gel with me. And I want to be clear here, just because the fragrance did not gel with me doesn't mean it's a bad product. Everyone's skin is different. I will not be using this on my face, but I will be using it as a body sunscreen though, because I really did like it. For fragrance, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this a 0.4. The last category, flashback. I could not wear it long enough to do a flash test with it on my face. I usually like to do it after I've applied it three times. I could not do that. But I did put it on the back of my hand in three layers like I usually would do on my face and took a photo. And so there was no, no flashback on this, which wonderful. So flashback will be getting a point from me. Overall, I think this is a fantastic product. And like I said, if this is going to be the only thing that you're wearing, you're not doing serums, you're not doing anything, in that case, I think it will be worth the price. If you're doing other things, maybe not this one. If you have sensitive skin, maybe not this one. But it will be getting an overall rating of 8.5. Objectively, I think that's a pretty fair rating for this product. I did like it. I really did like it. So that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this sunscreen have you tried it will you be trying it what are some other murata skincare products that you've tried and you are loving i would love to hear your thoughts click over here to see some of my previous videos and as always stay gorgeous stay fabulous and i'll see you love ladies and gents in my next video bye it was only 30 minutes yay oh, that never happens